there are, every now and then, and now it's been for years, Martha, I get the question, well, why is it that we pray in Arabic? Why do the prayers have to be in Arabic? And I, I want to uh, uh, address that right now because it's, it's a, a recurrent theme. Allah could, the, uh, Allah could have chosen and did choose languages for revelation, whether it's Hebrew or Arabic or the whether it's a language of revelation is probably not Aramaic, but at least um, the language is important because, and I'll, I'll give you a strange example for the context, but if you, and, I, and I'm not inviting you to do so, I'm just giving you an example, is that if, if those who learn um, uh, the magic of Suleiman, and it's not a good thing to learn it in the modern age, so I'm not, please don't do it. But if you, in the magic of Suleiman, you repeat the words, the, the phonetics of the words, the articulation of the words in the original language has a power of its own. Language, phonetics, affect the environment, shape the environment. So the fact that the Quran is in Arabic is not a coincidence. It is a power. The Quran in Arabic, even if you just turn the Quran on in a room and leave the room, and if you come back to this room, the energy and the aura of the room has changed. It has changed. And I've tried that in homes of non-Muslims. I've tried that in homes of people that have nothing to do with Islam whatsoever. And it is remarkable, the power, in the same way, by the way, that bringing a cross in a room has an effect on the aura. Unfortunately, not a good one. Uh, that's why hauntings, when they occur and you try to combat them with the cross, have the hauntings in, in the Christian context are awful. Possessions and things like that awful, they reach awful degrees. People don't realize it's partly because of the way that the cross is, the, the symbol of the cross, as a symbol of the torment of Jesus and so on, uh, is mocked. The Quran has a powerful cleansing effect. So yes, learning to utter the Quran in the original language is its own power. But equally as important is learning the meaning of what you're saying. So it is much better to learn the Fatha and learn Allahu Ahad, for instance, and repeat it every prayer than to learn surahs and you don't know their meaning and you're just repeating them. Now, the dua that you do, dua al qunut in prayer, you can do it any language. And in fact, I encourage people is that when they are in doing sujood, other than saying subhanahu rabbi al-ala, subhanahu rabbi al-ala, subhanahu rabbi al-ala, if they find their power in the original language, that in prostration, in sujood, pray in, in English, ask Allah for whatever you want beyond saying subhanahu rabbi al-ala three times. Now, of course, a lot of people, a lot of long-time converts, they start internalizing subhanahu rabbi al-ala so much that they find enormous amount of power in repeating it as many times as they want. Prolong, shorten your rukua and prolong your sujood. Rukua is but a salute. You're just saluting. You're saying, salat no. And, and the iqama after rukua, where you, subhanallah wa rahmanah, it's an opportunity for dua. So as standing, before the, you do the prostration, you can continue on with dua if you wish. There are various, things about that. But anyway, then beyond the subhanahu rabbi al-ala three times, you have absolute freedom to do dua as you wish. And you are closest to Allah, especially in the second sajda. Uh, so it is always recommended that if you go to prolong your sujood, prolong the second sajda. And when you get very good at it, 
you will accumulate the energy to the last raka. And the last raka in the last sajda will be the most powerful. And what you will experience in the last raka, in, in the last sajda, in the last raka, will be a sum total of the energy that you've accumulated in the rakas that you performed and the sajdas that you formed before. Am I, are you connecting with any of this? Or yes. Just, okay. Uh, because, you, you know, in the day and age we live in, you never know. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, all modern Muslims are, are so a byproduct of commercialism and materialism and its close kin, Wahhabism, because Wahhabism and commercialism and materialism are siblings. They, they, they wedded each other and founded each other very convenient brides. Um, that, uh, that's why some of the best consumers in the world are Wahhabis. I mean, it, it's all about consumption and uh, the, all the stuff we talk about, which was the essence of Islam for centuries, it just goes psh, above their heads. But you must understand that that is the essence of your faith. We are a religion as old as humanity itself. And sujood and salah is as old as humanity. And it is the salah, the, the Muslim form of salah, that is the way that Allah has been worshipped from the time of creation till today. It is, it is not people on their knees. It is people prostrating before the Lord. One final footnote, I mean, even the, some of the very interesting material that you can look at, the medieval hermits that in, in uh, um, uh, the, the, when they are represented, they're often represented worshiping God and very in a position very close to sujood, which is fascinating. Uh, but anyway, okay, questions. That's all I have.